This is a video to discuss whether Mormonism is racist against black people. I'm God Vlogger, and the reason this came up is the context of why were black people explicitly banned, because of their color, from becoming Mormon priests until 1978? Another way of asking it, why in 1978 did the Mormon God change his mind about black people and give some kind of a revelation? Uh, you know, a decade or two after the civil rights uh, you know, movement in the United States when it was no longer popular uh, for them to maintain the racism, you know, what, is that what made the Mormon God change his mind about black people? So, uh, well, you know, we're not talking here about whether Mormons themselves are racist. What I'm talking about is whether Mormonism, whether the actual religion in its inherent, you know, so-called sacred scriptures or what ha whatever you, you want to call the Book of Mormon. So right within the Book of Mormon, I'm going to show you a couple of quotes that talk about how black, you know, how the black skin is a curse intentionally inflicted by God. The first place is from the second book of Nephi, chapter 5. This is within the Book of Mormon. The background story here is that the Nephites are good people. They obey God. The, the Lamanites, uh, on the other hand, are sort of bad people who sort of turn from God. And you know, here's what happens to them in uh, chapter 5, verses 20 through 22. And I'll zoom in here uh, on it. Uh, basically, you know, where, you know, he doesn't want the uh, he doesn't want these Lamanites to uh, infiltrate and uh, and corrupt the Nephites, so he's so God is going to put a curse upon them so that they'll be recognizable. Uh, and he says, you know, this is God speaking uh, you know, through his prophet, of course. You know, wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, because we know it is just so delightsome, you know, to God and His people when people are nice and white. Uh, that they may not be enticing unto my people. So how do I keep them, these, uh, these Lamanites, from enticing my people? The Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. So you can't get any more explicit here that God is causing, causing their skin to turn black. Uh, and that's, and you know, this is what, the, what God is doing to them. And in the you know, preceding sentence, as I'll show back here, you know, this was, you know, this was a cursing, you know, explicitly a cursing by God. So, uh, you know, he, so he causes this skin of blackness to come upon these people, and thus saith the Lord God, I, would, I will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people. So, because obviously, you know, God's people, God's Mormon people, uh, he's thinking, are going to obviously find it absolutely loathsome that you know these pe you know that someone have blackness on their skin, so that's quote number one. Uh, and the next one also in the Book of Mormon. This one is uh, within the Book of Mormon. There's the Book of Moses, chapter seven. Uh, and you know, on any of these, you can freeze it if you really want to read the whole thing, or maybe I'll uh, copy paste it down below. Uh, but this goes through you know the the people of uh, Canaan and. Here the Lord saith unto me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the, the people of uh, Canaan uh, shall divide the land and do all of this stuff. Um, you know, but the land is going to be barren. It's going to be cursed by God. They're not going to be able to grow anything. For, uh, and you know, here we'll get to, I'll zoom in here. For behold, the Lord shall curse the land with much heat and the barrenness thereof shall go forth forever. And there was a blackness came upon all the children of Canaan, that they were despised among all people. Because, of course, the Mormon God knows that by putting a blackness on the children, by, have, by them having black skin, of course they're going to be despised by all people. So just like in the previous you know, book that we mentioned, uh, from the book of Moses, uh, you know, the previous quote, of course, that, you know, everybody is going to despise people if they have black skin. Uh, that is the underlying, not just assumption, but, you know, explicit uh, instruction, essentially, from this Mormon God. So uh, I leave it to you, you know, is the book of Mormon itself inherently racist? Now, what can you do? You can ask yourself, if you're a, a Mormon watching this, ask yourself, 
does this really make sense? Is there actually a, a reasonable explanation for why your Mormon God would consider black skin to be a curse? And do you really believe that black people are being cursed by God? Do you believe that, you know, that, that this is how your God inflicts a curse upon a, a group of humans? Uh, do you really believe in a God who would curse children and grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, for the sins of their parents or, grand, or grandparents or great-great-grandparents, that you have a God that's so uh, vengeful uh, that he's going to curse people who weren't even the so-called sinners at the time and put this black mark on them that, you know, and do you really believe that people should be despised because they have black skin? Um, or, here's another consideration for you, do you think that it is at least possible, do you think that it's at least possible that this is all just man-made mythology, just like, you know, every other, uh, you know, religion? Uh, you know, do you think that that's, you know, that that is a possibility and that that could better explain uh, why, you know, why, you know, this uh, is in there, you know, in your Book of Mormon? So those are some of my uh, thoughts and questions, uh, you know, about whether Mormonism as a religion, again, not saying Mormons, but Mormonism is racist against black people. If you uh, are interested in these videos, please subscribe, please rate them, uh, and please con please post your comments, especially if you are uh, Mormon or a member of uh, you know, Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints. Uh, if you have an explanation for these quotations, uh, I would absolutely love to hear them because I'm open. Maybe my reading of them is absolutely wrong, um, but it really just seems like it would be a tough thing to explain but if you've got an explanation bring it on I'd love to you know uh, I'm open to, to learning and being educated uh, on this or if you're an ex-Mormon uh, former Mormon uh, play, post your comments as well in terms of uh, how you did or did not see this uh, play out within uh, church beliefs or church doctrines or uh, sentiments among uh, you know among those within the faith uh, so I'd really like to hear your thoughts. Uh, so again, that's, uh, you know, post your comments uh, down below. And uh, those are my thoughts or questions, actually, on um, whether Mormonism as a religion is racist against black people. That Mormonism is growing rapidly among blacks is surely one of the greatest evidences of spiral de spiritual deception and desperation in modern history. I'm not going to go into the background of Mormonism and the perversions of it, but suffice it to say that if there are any people who ought not to convert to Mormonism, it should be African Americans. Now I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Here's why. According to this religion, founded by Joseph Smith in the early 1800s, Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. That doctrine's strange enough. But what's even stranger is Joseph Smith's belief that Lucifer is the father of the entire black race. Just, I'm just letting that sink in a minute. So when the Mormon missionaries come walking through your neighborhood, you can be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove and say, get off my porch, you racist. Second fastest growing religion among African Americans in America is Mormonism. And Joseph Smith declared that you are the children of Satan, the founder of the religion. Would somebody just help me and say, that ain't right. Here it is. Here it is. Here. And Mormonism did not, did not disavow that belief until 1974. Still, Mormonism is growing among blacks in America faster than among any other race. What a cruel irony that blacks are now embracing a religion that once viewed them literally as children of the devil. And
the Mormon Church banned all black people from its priesthood and its temples. This priesthood ban began in 1848 and continued until June 8th of 1978. Before June 8th, 1978, a black Mormon could enter a Mormon temple for only one reason to be sealed as a servant to a white Mormon so that the black Mormon could become an eternal servant to the white Mormon god or goddess in the eternities. Needless to say, only one black Mormon woman I know of ever did this. She was sealed as an eternal servant to Joseph Smith in the 1860s. There have been black Mormons since 1832, but not many of them. At first, they had full equality in the Mormon church, but in 1848, Brigham Young banned them from the Mormon priesthood, which every Mormon male over the age of 12 holds, and from the Mormon temples. A Mormon cannot be married for all eternity, nor become a god or goddess, until they are sealed in a Mormon temple and remain faithful to the Mormon church leaders until the end of their lives. In 1848, Brigham Young introduced the Curse of Cain doctrine into the Mormon church. This Curse of Cain doctrine was preached by Mormon leaders from 1848 until June 1978 over a period of 130 years. The Mormon leaders have never repudiated the Curse of Cain doctrine, nor issued an apology for it. I'll give you a brief overview of the Curse of Cain doctrine. According to the Curse of Cain doctrine, all humans were spirit sons and daughters of God in the pre-existence, also called the pre-earth life or the pre-mortal realm. You and I were there, as spirits, according to Mormon doctrine, so was Heavenly Father and His wives, and first son Jesus. Jesus and Lucifer, God's second-born son, got into an argument, and a war broke out. Two-thirds of the spirit children followed Jesus, and one-third of the spirit children followed Lucifer. Mormons see Jesus as the first-born son of Elohim, our Heavenly Father, and one of Elohim's goddess wives. They believe that Jesus is the exact physical image of God the Father, meaning a white man with red hair, blue eyes, and freckles. A third of the spirits followed Lucifer, the second-born son of God. Mormons don't draw paintings of him, but in Mormon temples before 1950, the devil was said to be black. But, in 1950, that was removed from the Mormon temple ceremony. In 1990, many more changes were made. Jesus and the spirits who followed him won the war in heaven, and cast out those spirits who followed Lucifer. Those spirits who followed Lucifer became the demons that wander the earth. Those spirits who followed Jesus in the war in heaven became human beings, us. Early Mormon leaders taught that those most valiant in the war in heaven, the most heroic spirits, were born as white babies in the image of God, since Mormons believe that God and Jesus are white men. The Mormon church always taught that Adam and Eve were two white people because they were created in the image of God, whom Mormons believe is an exalted white man who lived on a planet before this one. Adam and Eve had many sons and daughters, and all of them were white, like Adam and Eve. But how did the black race begin? The Mormon church had an answer for that as well. Mormon prophets taught that Cain was originally white like his parents, although less valiant in the war in heaven, but he was allowed to come to earth and be born, because God wanted the less valiant spirits to come to earth too, but he would mark them with a mark. Cain couldn't have the priesthood. But he wanted the priesthood, and was jealous of his brother Abel, who had the priesthood, so Cain killed Abel. God saw that he killed his brother Abel, so God sent a curse upon Cain, which meant he would wander the earth, and also the ground would not yield its fruit to him. Furthermore, God would ban Cain and all the descendants of Cain from the priesthood until all of Abel's children first had the opportunity to hold the priesthood. God cursed Cain and put a mark upon him. According to the Curse of Cain doctrine taught by Mormon church leaders for 130 years, Cain was changed by God from a white man into the world's first Negro. Cain then married his sister, there were no other women around, and God changed her into the world's second Negro. Cain and his sister became the parents of the black African or so-called Negro race. This was taught by the very highest Mormon leaders for 130 years, 
from 1848 to 1978. This was called the Curse of Cain Doctrine. Brigham Young, the second president of the Mormon Church, and the man who first preached the Curse of Cain Doctrine, declared over the pulpit that Negroes were the children of Cain, and that the mark of Cain was a black skin, a flat nose, and kinky hair. Let me quote from Brigham Young himself. Cain slew his brother. Cain might have been killed, and that would have put a termination to that line of human beings. This was not to be, and the Lord put a mark on him, which is the flat nose and black skin. Trace mankind down to after the flood, and then another curse is pronounced upon that same race, that they should be the servants of servants, and they will be until that curse is removed." End quote. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 7, page 290. Not only did Brigham Young ban all black Mormons from the priesthood and temples, he also banned interracial couples from getting married, under penalty of death. Let me quote him. Quote, Shall I tell you the law of God in regard to the African race? If the white man who belongs to the chosen seed mixes his blood with the seed of Cain, the penalty, under the law of God, is death on the spot. This will always be so. End quote. Brigham Young, Journal of Discourses, Volume 10, page 110. At least one black Mormon had his throat cut from ear to ear in Salt Lake City in 1866, allegedly for trying to marry a white woman. His name was Thomas Coleman. Around his neck was found a sign which read, Niggers should leave white women alone. I'm very proud of my faith and the faith of my fathers. And I certainly believe that it is a, a faith, um, well, it's true, and I, I, I love my faith. And I'm not gonna distance myself in any way from my faith. The question is, do you believe it's a sin for a white man to marry and appropriate with a black? No, next question. The successor of Brigham Young was John Taylor. He was the third president of the Mormon Church. He continued to preach that black people were the cursed children of Cain, and he continued to ban them from the priesthood and temples. This is what he had to say about black people. And after the flood, we are told that the curse that had been pronounced upon Cain was continued through Ham's wife, as he had married a wife of that seed. And why did it pass through the flood? Because it was necessary that the devil should have a representation upon the earth as well as God. End quote. Journal of Discourses, Volume 22, page 304.